Is it possible to keep the brain active after death? A question that has intrigued humanity since time immemorial, sparking the imagination and pushing the boundaries of our understanding. It's a query that dances on the edge of science and the supernatural, delving into the mysteries of consciousness and existence. Is there a scientific backbone to this speculative wonder? Could there truly be life after death, or more specifically, brain activity after the cessation of life? Let's delve into the science behind this intriguing question. First, we need to understand what happens when the brain dies. In essence, brain death is the complete and irreversible cessation of all brain function, including the involuntary activity necessary to sustain life. It's like the master switch controlling the machinery of the body has been flipped off permanently. Brain death is not a temporary state, like a coma. It's not a deep, unreachable sleep, but rather the end of the road. In a coma, there's still a possibility, however slim, that the person might wake up. The brain is still active, still sending out signals, still orchestrating the symphony of life. But in brain death, that's not the case. There's no activity, no signals, no life. The brain, that intricate and complex organ, has ceased to function. It's not on standby, it's not in sleep mode, it's off. And once it's off, it can't be switched back on again. This might seem straightforward, but it's a concept that's fraught with emotional, ethical and medical complexities. The boundary between life and death can seem blurry, especially when technology allows us to keep the heart beating and the lungs breathing long after the brain has stopped working. But could there be a way to keep this intricate organ active, even after death? Is it possible to keep the lights on, even when the master switch has been flipped off? It's a provocative question, one that pushes the boundaries of science, ethics, and our understanding of life and death. Enter cryonics, a science that may hold the key to this puzzle. This field of study, which sounds like it's been plucked straight out of a science fiction novel, is in fact very real. Cryonics is the practice of preserving human bodies at extremely low temperatures, with the aim of resuscitating and restoring them to full health in the future, when advancements in medical technology may make this possible. At its core, cryonics is driven by the hope for a second chance at life, a chance to cheat death. This is not a simple process of freezing, however. It involves a sophisticated procedure known as vitrification. Vitrification is the transformation of a substance into a glass-like state, which in this context is used to prevent ice formation during cryopreservation. When a body is cryopreserved, the aim is to keep the cells intact, and ice crystals can cause severe damage to cell structures. Vitrification circumvents this problem by replacing the water in cells with a protective solution, preventing ice formation and thereby preserving the cellular structure. The procedure begins immediately after legal death is declared. The body is cooled down to a temperature where metabolic processes come to a near halt, but decomposition does not set in. The blood is replaced with a medical-grade antifreeze to protect the cells from ice damage. The body is then gradually cooled to a temperature of minus 196 degrees Celsius, where it is stored in a container filled with liquid nitrogen. This process, as futuristic as it might sound, is grounded in the principles of biology, physics and medicine. Cryonics is not simply about freezing and thawing, it's about preserving life at the cellular level with the ultimate goal of restoration to a healthy state in the future. Yet. As promising and intriguing as cryonics might be, it is not without its controversies and challenges. It's a field that pushes the boundaries of our understanding of life and death, and as such, it naturally attracts a fair share of skepticism and ethical debate. Yet cryonics is not without its controversies and challenges. Cryonics seems promising, but why isn't it mainstream? That's a question that many people ask, and the answer lies in the numerous controversies surrounding this field. At the heart of the debate is the ethical conundrum that cryonics presents. The very idea of freezing a person's body or brain with the hope of future revival raises serious ethical questions. For instance, what are the implications of bringing someone back to life in a future they may not recognize or want to be a part of? And what of their legal rights and obligations? Would they have the same rights as those who were never cryopreserved? Or would they be considered a new class of citizens? 
Then there's the legal aspect. The law typically considers a person dead when their heart stops beating. But cryonics operates on the premise that death is a process, not an event. This differing definition of death can create a legal quagmire, especially when it comes to matters of property, inheritance and even marriage. But perhaps the most significant controversy is the lack of scientific proof supporting the successful revival of a cryopreserved brain. Despite technological advancements, we're yet to see a case where a human brain, once cryopreserved, has been successfully revived and restored to its full functionality. This lack of empirical evidence fuels skepticism and raises questions about the feasibility of cryonics. Furthermore, there are arguments against the feasibility of cryonics itself. Some scientists argue that the very process of cryopreservation might cause irreparable damage to cells and tissues making revival an impossibility. Others question whether the complexities of human consciousness can truly be preserved and restored. Despite these challenges, cryonics continues to stir the imagination of many. It's a field that sits at the intersection of science, philosophy and ethics, pushing the boundaries of what we understand and accept about life and death. Whether you see it as a beacon of hope or a flight of fantasy, there's no denying that cryonics is a topic that continues to provoke thought and debate. What does the future hold for cryonics and brain preservation? In our ceaseless quest for understanding, humankind is forever pushing boundaries, and in the realm of cryonics and brain preservation, the future appears intriguingly limitless. The advancements in technology could potentially make the once seemingly impossible a tangible reality. Let's first delve into the world of nanotechnology. Imagine a myriad of microscopic robots, each smaller than a human hair, working in unison to repair and restore damaged cells. These tiny molecular machines, or nanobots as they're often called, could be the key to reversing the effects of aging and disease on our brains. They might even have the capability to repair damage caused by the freezing process in cryonics, ensuring that the brain is perfectly preserved. Nanotechnology's potential in brain preservation is immense, but it's not the only technology that has the potential to revolutionize this field. Artificial intelligence, or AI, is another promising frontier. AI's role in the future of cryonics could be twofold. First, AI could be used to create precise, individualized freezing protocols, taking into account a person's unique biological makeup to ensure optimal preservation. This could drastically increase the chances of successful revival in the future. Second, AI might be instrumental in the revival process itself. Imagine a future where AI can map the neural connections in a preserved brain, effectively creating a digital copy of the person's mind. This digital consciousness could be awoken in a virtual environment, or perhaps even implanted into a new biological body. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves. While these technologies show great promise, they are still in their infancy, and there are many scientific and ethical hurdles to overcome. Yet, the future of brain preservation is undoubtedly exciting. As we continue to explore the intricacies of the human brain and the potential of emerging technologies, we inch closer to a future where death might not be the end, but rather a new beginning. Only time will tell whether science will eventually unlock the secrets of immortality. So, back to our initial question. Can we keep the brain active after death? 